remember what you were told about continuity. Of course you were told about the official definition. If you have a function from a to r, then it's continuous at x0. If for all epsilon greater than 0, there is a delta greater than 0, such that whenever your point x is delta close to x0, you know that the function value difference is less than epsilon. But what were you told about intuition? This is important because when you do mathematics, it's not always possible to think in terms of these abstract notions. You have to imagine a concept intuitively to be able to know how and when to apply it. So I think that you were most likely told these things. It's a curve without breaks. Or you were told that it's a curve that you can draw without lifting your pen from paper, right? This sounds familiar. And when it came down to imagining this kind of function graphically, you would always assume that this function looks something like this. So if my function is continuous at many points at, or perhaps at all points in A, then it looks something like that. But even if we know that it's continuous at one point, it is still reasonable to assume that locally around our point x0, it should look something like this, right? There should be a portion of a graph that looks like a line with no breaks. But guess what? In this video, I will introduce you to a function that demonstrates that this intuition can be wrong. This function is called popcorn function, or rather more academically, Thomae's function. And here's how it's defined. It's a function from unit interval to unit interval that's defined like that. It maps rational points. So if x is p over q with co prime numerator and denominator, so rational points get mapped to one over their denominator and it gets mapped to zero if x is irrational. This construction looks very similar to that of Dirichlet function, but it has a weird property. It turns out that f is continuous at every irrational point. But before I make any judgments, let us appreciate the graph of this function. So here's the plot of our function at scale one fifth, meaning that the smallest fraction that I evaluate the function at is one fifth. This is what happens at scale one tenth. We have more points. And notice how on the bottom I have tried to depict irrational points that remain at x axis. They get mapped to zero and they are slightly shifted from our rational points. But of course, there are many more of them. So if we go to a bigger scale, as in smaller scale, say 1 20th, you can notice that points become more dense um, as they get closer to the x axis. So on the next slide, we'll see an extreme 
we'll take it to the scale 1 40th and then 1 hundredth. So here you can see that animation kind of breaks down and it's impossible to distinguish points near the bottom. But you get a general idea of how the function looks like. So as you can probably see, this function looks like anything but continuous. Nevertheless, let us try to attack this claim. So let x0 be an irrational point inside our unit interval. And I will be using a sequential definition of continuity. So what we want to do, we want to take a sequence xn that tends to x0 where each xn belongs to our set and we want to show that the functional value evaluated at these points will also tend to a functional value at x0 which is by definition 0. Okay, so what can we do? If xm, some term of our sequence, is irrational, then we know that the functional value at that point is 0. So if it so happens that our sequence consists solely of irrational points, then we are done. It's always zero, so it tends to zero. So it is more interesting to consider points that are rational. In fact, it's better to consider a subsequence. So let x and k be a subsequence of xn that consists of rational points only. But if they are rational, you know that we can rewrite them as numerator over denominator. So it's P and K over Q and K, right? And we have that this sequence still tends to X naught, right? Because if a sequence tends to a limit, any subsequence must also tend to a limit. That's a basic fact, fact from analysis. So this converges as K tends to infinity. And here's the question, can these denominators, Q and K, take finitely many different values? So as we approach X naught, can this number be chosen only out of a finite number of points. Well, think about it. Of course, it can be the case because x0 is irrational. So if you want to approach it with a rational sequence, your denominator has to get bigger and bigger because you want to get more and more accuracy. Or you can also judge from contradiction. If you assume that denominators can only take finitely many different values, then your sequential terms are also coming from a finite set, right? Because P and K is bounded above by the denominator because we're only working in this set. The top of this fraction cannot exceed the bottom. So if you limit the set over which this guy can vary, this guy will also be limited. So what you will end up having 
is you will end up having a finite number of fractions from which you can choose your terms to be. And clearly, you cannot approach an irrational point with arbitrary precision with just by staying in this set. So this tells us that q and k tend to infinity as k tend to infinity. But that implies that when we take, then when we apply a function to our point, it becomes 1 over q and k, and since it tends to infinity, this guy tends to 0, which is exactly what we wanted here. And so there you go. We have proved that it's continuous. As a small bonus, try and prove that it is discontinuous at every rational point. This shouldn't be too hard. So here you go, guys. Don't always trust your intuition in mathematics blindly. Even though that intuition for continuous functions works in most cases, it is important to remember that there is always a difference between rigor and what we imagine concepts to look like in reality.